Good evening, and welcome to the Coffee Bar in My Home. I'm Joseph Brewer, and we're going to finish up tonight on uh, uh, the discussions on my book, A Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Uh, tonight should be uh, session 12. Um, I only expected these to be about eight, and we're at 12. Uh, tonight's going to be my personal testimony. Um, I, I, you know, I think our testimonies are important. People need to hear our testimonies. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, give you my testimony tonight. So I'm 59, uh, married, father of three. Um, all my kids are grown up and gone. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I love being a dad, um, by the way. I just, I, I love being a dad. I love being a husband. Um, I love being a Christian. So, and I love being a Christian man. Um, but uh, anyway, so winter 94, 95, somewhere right in there. Um, I was... Um, we lived in a back house with alley access and um, I don't know. I was home during the day for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, I was uh, very frustrated with a lot of things in my life. And um, I wasn't sure what to do. Um, so I had been through a divorce. Um, I got custody of my sons um, when they were six and three. I raised my boys. Um, I didn't leave them with their biological mother. I, I got custody. I raised them. I didn't have children for somebody else to raise. I, I had children for me to raise, for me to uh, be their parent, be their father. Anyway, um, but the divorce was hard on them. And, uh, it, you know, so everybody was struggling. I was uh, remarried and uh, had a daughter with my wife of uh, now 28 years, 28 and a half years. Um, and, um, but, you know, um, having that um, blended family, there, there's always going to be struggles with that. And anyway, I was uh, <clears throat> out in the alley um, behind the house. I was uh, smoking a cigarette and I was pacing up and down the alley, contemplating um, what direction I should go with my life. Um, and uh, had a lot of options, a lot of things that uh, I was considering. Um, many of them weren't weren't good ideas but um anyway i was just going along rehearsing these things in my mind contemplating them um thinking about them and um god interrupted i, I didn't think about god at that time um god was I, I can't say god was ever in my thoughts um but uh <clears throat> It came to me, what about God? And I, I said out loud, um, pacing in that alley by myself, smoking, okay, what about God? Um, I realized rather quickly that that was the best of all options. That if God could affect change um, in my life, in my family's life, um, that would be the best option um, out of everything that I was contemplating and considering. So, um, you know, it, that's sovereignty. That that's that's providence. I mean, God interrupted my my life in that moment that I might consider him. Um, I, you know, that, wow, that, you know, to me, I, I find that really powerful. 
Um, you know, it wasn't somebody else there. Um, I, <laughs> I got chills right now. I mean, it's just God um, considered me, um, this guy, this, you know, this nothing, this, you know, this sinner and interrupted my life um, in that moment. And uh, wow. <laughs> wow um you know that that that's that's <laughs> something to be eternally grateful for um anyway i said okay um i'm willing to find out whatever it is that you have in store for me god um i'm gonna tell you i wasn't happy about that i wasn't happy about that at all um I uh I didn't think very much of Christians. Um I uh I knew a lot of supposed Christians and a lot of people who claim to be Christians and uh I really I didn't care for them. Um I didn't want to be like them. And I you know aside from my grandfather um flawed man no doubt um you know uh but he uh his testimony was always strong with me i mean i i know he was you know i know he had his weaknesses and i know that uh um he had his struggles you know fifth grade education coal miner um you know lived a really rough life but uh he shared his testimony with me and um funny thing is nobody in my family has ever heard his testimony but me um he uh he told me that he had been under conviction for nine years um that um god had been trying to get a hold of him and he had been under conviction for nine years he said now he was a barroom brawling, falling down drunk. Um, I mean, he he ran around on my grandma. He abandoned my mom and her sister for months on end while he was out drinking. That day that God got a hold of him, the day he was saved, that he trusted Jesus, he never drank again. He never ran around again. Um, he, I mean, we're talking a, a you know a, an immediate change in that man's life and i find it astounding that nobody else in my family has ever heard his testimony except when i relate that to him um so he was somebody uh he was like i said he was still a flawed man he was still a weak man he still had you know aren't we all um you know we're we're just we're sinners saved by grace um but anyway he uh he made a difference in my life and i know how much he loved me i would see him uh when i would stay the night there he would get up in the morning and he would sit um european cross style legs crossed in the way a guy sits european men sit with their legs crossed and not american men um with his cup of coffee sitting next to the stove with the fire on all four burners for, give him a little heat but he'd read his Bible every morning. Um, and every night when he went to bed, that's how he went to bed, reading his Bible. Um, and always faithful in church, so long as his health uh, permitted. And uh, anyway, man had a solid testimony with me. So he made a difference in my life. And a guy named Mike Rommel um, that I worked with. Um, he made a difference too. He was uh, he was somebody else. He was a Christian that I admired. I saw genuine love from that man. I mean, we're construction workers. I mean, we're out there, um, you know, bib overalls, greasy, dirty, you know, swinging sledgehammers and wrenching on stuff and welding. And um, yeah, you know, and this guy's witnessing to me. Um, and this guy is showing me. Uh, the love of Christ. So, you know, he he did. He had an impact on me. So those two those two men 
um, of the Christians that I knew, those two really had an impact on me. So be that impact on somebody else if you have the opportunity. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> part of my problem with what the Christians I knew believed was they thought God was, uh, I don't know, their personal servant or uh, bellhop or, you know, ring the bell and God's going to uh, grant their wishes. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, and then, of course, there was, you know, the ones that the Pentecostals and the Charismatics and, um, I, you know, it. Anyway, it uh, um, that there were some issues that uh, I really struggled with, and and I think what it really came down to was uh, sovereignty of God. I don't think I never heard anybody other than my grandfather really expressing anything that resembled the sovereignty of God, and 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 so. Um, I grew up uh, going to church. Um, I grew up in a Christian environment where I don't remember a time that I didn't believe in God. I don't remember a time that I didn't believe in Jesus. Uh, I, I don't remember a time that I didn't believe in the Trinity, but I definitely wasn't a saved guy. Um, I had some false hopes at some Christian summer camps I went to. Um, you know, they had us pray a prayer and um stuff like that and you know i thought i got saved and but i knew quickly after i got back that 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 wasn't real that wasn't salvation because uh i shouldn't be acting the way i was acting and and i knew uh that i wasn't saved and i wasn't uh, a christian i had been baptized and um but i i knew i wasn't saved i knew those were all false hopes um anyway um so that lack of sovereignty of God and them believing in the sovereignty of God, I think that was one of the things that uh, I really I really struggled with with them. Um, and I don't recall ever seeing any consideration of holiness um, with most of them. And I saw bitterness, anger, um, I mean, I, you know, we all struggle. We're, I mean, we're all sinners saved by grace, those of us who are saved. So, um, but I really, I, I, I didn't think much of Christians. And so I was kind of upset <laughs> when God interrupted my life and I thought I was going to have to be like them. Um, but I began reading my Bible um, daily and I began praying for God to show me to the church he wanted me to go to. Um, I knew I needed to go to church. I mean, it was just, I knew I needed to be in church. Um, where else was I going to learn about God? I mean, I could read my Bible, sure. But where else was I going to learn about God? Um, and uh, where else was I going to learn about the Christian life? So I knew I needed to be in church. I wasn't saved. Um, God interrupted my life, but um, I wasn't saved. So anyway, I began reading my Bible and I began praying for God to show me to a church. And I got to tell you, I didn't expect it to be a Baptist church. Um, my family, we went to a Baptist church, a quasi Baptist church when I was, uh, oh, from probably, I don't know, somewhere around right after I was born till I was about seven or eight years old. And uh, then we left. Um and my family never seemed to have a high opinion of Baptists, so I really didn't expect to be a Baptist. <laughs> really didn't expect it to be a Baptist church. I thought there was going to be some community church or something. Anyway, so uh, again, I was reading my Bible, praying, and uh, I would drive by. I would either drive by down the alley behind our church or um, a block over from our church. I seldom ever drove down the front of our church in front of it. Um, my boys went to school uh, one half a block away from the church. So I would take my boys to school, pick them up. Um, and uh, one day I drove past the front of the church. And um, 
again, God interrupted my life and interrupted my moment. And I knew that I needed to go try that Baptist church. Um, and uh, so I looked over at it. I went, hmm, Baptist church. Never would have considered that. So that was a Tuesday. I know it was a Tuesday. And then uh, Thursday night was the church's night of door-to-door uh, -door evangelism. So, all right, I'm a long hair guy, earring, um, smoked. Anyway, and our house is on, you know, we back up to the alley. Um, you can't see our house from the front house. So again, sovereignty of God. I was, uh, somebody knocked on my back door on the alley side. Well, that's a little, little scary. Cause you don't know who's coming to the door from the alley. Cause there's no fence or anything. So, um, not gonna lie. I had a gun tucked in the small of my back with my hand on it. Uh, no shirt long hair, a uh, pair of jeans, earring, answered the door. And um, it was three guys from my church um, inviting me to come to church. And I said, they told me who it was. And I said, you guys have that Christian school, right? Uh, with an alley that drives by Baptist church. Yeah. Yeah. Be there Sunday. Um, it wasn't about them. It was God letting me know that um, that was, in fact, the church that he wanted me to go to. Um, he used those three men um, in that moment to, um, yeah, that was my second piece of proof that that was where God wanted me to go. So we went Sunday evening. I took my wife, um, my children, and we went Sunday evening because, look, I mean, I the way I, where i grew up um that's where you really found out what a church was like was sunday evening um everybody put on their you know their best on sunday morning acted their best but sunday night they the attendance would be down they didn't dress quite as nice uh so that was where you really got a feel for the churches so we went on sunday night so you know again long hair earring but i you know i had a double-breasted suit on i was sitting there and we sat in the back right side, um, sitting there. And uh, I don't know what else my pastor preached about or said that night. But there were some kids in the front. And I believe I know who it was. Uh, and uh, But he told one of the boys to wake up, sit up, and pay attention to him. Because there was nothing more important than God's word. Well, okay that hit me hard because that meant he didn't care what anybody else in that auditorium thought. Um, he didn't care who he offended. He didn't care about anybody's um, opinions. So I knew in that moment he was a straight shooter and I decided, okay, all right, this guy is a straight shooter. Um, I'm coming back. I'm going to find out what he believes because I know he's honest. I know, he, and you know, I know he's going to tell me what he actually believes. And uh, he's not going to pull punches. He's not going to play games. He's just going to tell me the truth. And I really like that a lot. So um, I came back. Well, it it took about. 18 months of unlearning things I had learned um, in the churches I had gone to as a kid and to clear up my thinking. And um, I remember the day that I was sitting there that I was sitting, we still had pews at that time. I was sitting in the pew right side about halfway up and he was preaching on the sovereignty of God. And I, I realized I, that was just, I, that was it that for me that was that one little missing thing that i hadn't didn't understand hadn't figured out hadn't put together is that god was a sovereign being a sovereign person um so anyway um 
it wasn't too long after that that I was saved and um, that would have been the fall of 96 sometime fall of 96 um, the day I got saved I was at a business meeting uh, with a couple of guys we were planning to start a business together and um, honestly I just I couldn't pay attention to what we were talking about and it just didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. I didn't, I didn't care about that business. The only thing that mattered um, was resolving things with God. Um, and uh, I just, I, you know, we're in the middle of discussing things. We're, we're taking notes. We're working out a game plan how we're going to move forward with a business. And uh, I said, I got to go. Uh, I couldn't explain it to them. They wouldn't understand. I did. And it didn't matter. I didn't care how mad they were. I didn't care what else was going on. I just knew I had to get out of there and that I needed to be saved. Um, now, I drove... 90 minutes, two hours to work most every day. So um, driving was always where I did my best thinking, um, my best contemplating. And so I had driven, oh, 30 miles or so. And I, there, you know, it, it just, I can tell you where I was on the freeway. I mean, it was the, uh, it, you know, it was the uh, interchange between freeways, but uh, it was there that I trusted Jesus. Um, and I remember thinking, I'm just going to put myself in his hands. And it doesn't matter what it is. It, don't, it doesn't matter what, you know, what happens where, you know, I'm just going to trust Jesus and I'm just going to put myself in his hands and he can do what he wants with me. And I remember having this mental image of just, you know, like those trust falls kind of thing, but throwing myself um, backwards into his hands and, uh, you know, obviously big hands and, you know, but um, yeah. Um, and uh, I was saved right there on that that section of freeway. Um, but like I said, I always that was always. I mean, you know, once you've been driving the same route over and over and over and over, you know, it's just to a degree it's autopilot. So that was always my uh, my my place to just shut out the world and think. And, uh, and and God used that too. Um, uh, that's where he drew me to Christ was there, you know. Um, so anyway, um, I remember uh, sitting on the porch uh, the next uh, day and uh, sitting out back on the porch, reading a book, smoking a cigarette. Um, and I told my wife that the angels brought me happiness. Um, well, you know, that was my ignorance as, uh, you know, as someone newly saved, that was just, that was my ignorance. It was actually the Holy Spirit. And um, anyway, it, uh, but I just, I remember that, um, that moment of, I, <clears throat> I had a joy and a peace that I had never known before. Um, and uh, it was, it was powerful. You know, I mean, I, I just, I wanted to, so I, I shared that with my wife, but I later figured out that I, it wasn't the angels that brought it to me that, it, you know, it was the Holy Spirit. But uh, anyway, um, so I continued to smoke for a little while after that. And then one day I was out having a smoke and uh I felt like God was staring at me while I was out there having a smoke. I felt like Adam in the garden. And uh, um, when Adam was hiding from God, I actually, <laughs> I, I know, but I actually 
moved back under the eave of my house while I was smoking that cigarette thinking God wouldn't see me. And uh, I knew in that moment that uh, it was time for me to quit smoking. And, um, and I prayed about it. And uh, I, I, I quit smoking uh, very shortly after that. And I, I've never smoked again. And, um, and I, you know, I used to drink uh, off and on after I got custody of my boys, I didn't drink much, but uh, I never had another drink after that. And I, I, you know, after the day that I was saved, um, I never had a drink. And then uh, I quit smoking shortly after that. Um, so anyway, that was the that was the fall of 1996. And um, then my pastor examined my testimony very thoroughly. Um, he, uh, we spent many uh, opportunities in his office together, and he would ask me questions um, to verify my testimony and find out, was it a false hope or was I actually saved? And um, so um, I was convinced I was saved. He was convinced I was saved. I was baptized. I became a member of our church and I've been there ever since. Um, so I've been there since oh first quarter of 95 so um been there a long time and uh you know i praise god for um my pastor um I, and you know and praise god that he took the time to examine my testimony to hear it to ask questions probing questions uh to do his best to make sure that I was saved before baptizing me and uh, letting me become a member of our church. So anyway, it uh, you know I, I, I'm very grateful for that, and I I think that's a a very important uh, aspect of a pastor's ministry is examining testimonies so anyway um but you know praise god i've been there ever since i've uh wow i've i've <laughs> feels like most of my life and uh but you know i'm grateful to god for that and i praise god for that so anyway that's my personal testimony um and uh i hope something in there was a blessing for you and um, again, if you uh, have any questions that uh, you'd like me to try and answer for you uh, regarding my book, um, AKA, it's right here, AKA JoeBrewer.com. Uh, you can click the contact and message me that way, or AKA JoeBrewer at yahoo.com. And you can email me there. And, uh, but if you have enough, if, if enough people have questions uh, that they would like me to try and answer, then I'll do one more session and, and I'll try and answer those. Um, if there's enough people that think a live session would be good, uh, then we, you know, we might consider that as well. But otherwise, um, thank you for taking the time to consider uh, my book. Um, you know, I hope God blesses you with it. I hope that uh, uh, you find it very useful in your ministry. And um, I'll, I'll update it again, um, probably not for another year or so. Um, I've already revised it once or updated it once as new things came along. But uh, anyway, um, but again, thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope I've been a blessing to you. Um, I hope that it makes a difference in your ministry and in, in, and in your church's ministries. So with that, let's pray and uh, we'll close for tonight. Father, thank you for the opportunity you gave me to write this book for the insight, the wisdom. Um, thank you for interrupting my life that I might be saved. Pray that you would just bless these folks that uh, took time to watch this. Pray that you would just um, 
use my book in their lives that uh, they might be better prepared for the ministry, uh, that they would, uh, that you would bless their ministries. Pray that you would use these folks in the lives of all they come in contact with. Pray that you would protect their churches and bless them. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a good night.